This is a podcast inspired by escapism, which is the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities, especially by seeking entertainment or engaging in fantasy. Escape with us. Not just when you want distraction from unpleasant realities, but when you want to join friends who share similar thoughts, similar dreams, who seek and get their escape. The wind is blowing, and the sails are set. Welcome to the Waza Odyssey Podcast. This is the great escape speaking. So now, how about we escape? Today's topic is about a new term I'm using for a parody of creepypastas. For those who don't know, creepypastas are essentially internet horror Horror. stories passed around on forums and other sites to disturb and frighten readers. The name creepypasta comes from the word copypasta, an internet slang term from a block of text that gets copied and pasted over and over again from website to website. So, epic pastas are stories with more of a comical twist than its counterpart. Without further ado, the wind is blowing and the sails are set. Pasta One, written by me, titled Mr. Trollolo, the Trollolo Trance. If you want to know who Mr. Trollolo is, a link to the YouTube video will be in the comments section below. As a kid who loved music, He was tranced by those who could create the melodies with their own voices. But as he tried, no one could bear to listen. You can't sing, people would tell him. You don't have the voice for it. But he didn't stop. He wanted to be like the musicians he listened to growing up. So he constantly ate butter every day and rubbed butter all along the outside of his throat daily. on top of honey, and continued singing. Until one day at school, he sang during class and put everyone in a coma from his singing. The people were in a coma at the hospital could not stop humming the same tune that was sung to them. Within hours they woke, singing it now all in sync. One night, hearing his fateful call via the Chololo trance, they all disappeared into the night alongside him. So if you're walking wherever at night, and out of nowhere you hear the Trollolo trance singing, coming out of the darkness, run. Because on and on as he gets closer to you, you try to plug your ears, but the haunting yet eerily catchy, buttery voice has you in its grasp. Pun intended. Already echoing and bouncing back and forth between your eardrums. Suddenly, you can't get the trollolo out of your head. Then you start singing with him in sync. In that instant, you become yet another victim of the trollolo trance, singing the same song as you turn into a were trollolo. Pasta 2 The Master. Written by Nick, that's me, and Essence. This kid loved nature, but to be more specific, he loved terrorizing it. Soon enough, it became too much, and nature fought back, and he was pimp slapped by a poison oak tree. Then he gets felt up by a fellow poison oak tree behind him. Startled and scared out of his mind, he flees the woods in his backyard and heads home to safety. 
The next morning, he wakes up with a bad case of butt itch-itis, meaning he got a bad itching rash in between his booty cheeks, and it wouldn't go away. As each day progressed, he noticed from his butt and onward were changing into bark, moss, and leaves. He tried telling people, but no one could see what he was talking about. Only he could. Not even the doctor he visited saw a thing. The transformation soon after was complete, and he became a creature covered in mostly moss, leaves, and bark. Now left to be a part of the woods, never to be seen by his friends and family again. Maybe. Or maybe not. <laughs> Moral of the story is, don't mess with nature. Paso 3, The Blue Bruiser, written by Casey, Essence, and Nick. Our story begins with a girl who had been drinking too much, stumbling home which was walking distance from the party she had attended. Just a few blocks away. She decided to take a shortcut because she apparently forgot her high heels at the party and figured she'd get them when she was able to see straight again. Since they've been hurting her feet a bit more than usual. While on this route, she sees a drink me bottle in the alley that was shaped just like her new favorite drink she partook of. She was starting to lose her tip tipsiness anyway, so she figured why not bring it back. The next day, it was a normal one like any other. She was in her room getting dressed, but this time, she saw something. It was disturbing. There was a giant black and blue bruise directly on the center of her chest. She didn't know where it came from. She hadn't done anything extreme. The most extreme thing she did was text while going down the steps. And even then, she glanced at the stairs. It was then the bits and pieces from last night rushed to her head like a magnet to a fridge. Her hands shook as she moved them to touch her chest. Don't do that, a voice said in her head. You really don't want to do that. I'm still tender. She yelled out with her heart racing. M Mom! Mom! Her very breath was rapid as she waited for her to enter the room. What? What is it? She answered, entering the room doorway, a voice full of concern. She turned around slowly and, afraid to move or show it. Her mother gasped and covered her mouth with a shaky hand. No words were said. She turned and ran down the hall. Get your sister to the car. She heard her ordering her sister. Why? Just do it. Her mother came rushing into the room, wanting to see what had gotten Mom all worked up in a fuss. Oh no! What happened to you? I don't know. I just woke up like this. She pulled down her top and grabbed her shoes. As she made her way out of the room, she noticed that her breathing was getting harder. In any, in any other circumstances, any normal person would think that it was because she was freaking out. But this wasn't a normal, everyday, stressful event. This thing was growing to the size of a baby's skull. Oof. That sounded really dark. Maybe I should have said baby's head. Eh, sounds a little better. Her sister and herself made their way to the front door. She grabs the keys before they left. She guided her down the front steps and fiddles with the keys to open the car door. She was panting and looking down at her chest. The bruise is real. It's actually there. Black with a faint purplish blue outline. There. She heard her say under her voice. She guided her shoulder to the car. She ducked down and scooted over to make room for her to get in. They sat in the car waiting for her mother to come out. She was calling her husband and telling them what happened and gathering medical forms. The girl looked down at her chest, at the black mass. She was so concerned for it. 
Last night, the drink. It had to be it, she thought. It doesn't really hurt. I wonder if I just... Her fingers gently glossed over it, not even touching her skin. But the fine hairs. The ones that covered our bodies so we could sense things such as touch. On her chest. The moment content... Hmm, excuse me. The moment contact is made, her lungs felt as though they collapsed under the pain. Her breathing stopped. No matter how hard she tried to breathe, then nothing would happen. Like her tongue was pressed to the back of her mouth, preventing her from breathing. She pounded on her sister's arm, trying to desperately to not alarm her. Summer! Summer, breathe! With every breath out, or even when she was not trying to breathe in, the space in her chest tightened. It was as if she had a snake wrapped around her lungs, and with every breath it tightened. Most people would feel dizzy, but she didn't. She felt herself fading. I'm not gonna make it, she thought. I'm not gonna make it to the hospital. There won't be enough time. Tears started to fall down her face. She didn't want to die. She wasn't ready. Mom, help! My sister screams. Help someone, please! In the end, she made it to the hospital. But when trying to remove the still growing and face forming bruise, it ripped herself from the, her body and attacked the doctors in a self defense. Unaware of where or who it was, imprinted on Summer, the girl it grew from. And with the doctors out of commission, it performed, it performed, uh, excuse me, it performed a surgery on her to close the gaping hole in her chest. And ever since then, it became a watchful, sassy, and sarcastic guardian and crime fighter on the side, known as the Blue Bruiser. Moral of the story, don't drink random liquids you see in awesome looking bottles, unless you want to risk getting a bruise growing on your chest and then it's separating from you becoming a crime fighter and guardian. Honestly, that's not a bad trade. And so ends part one to the epic pasta series that actually exists in the continuity of my novel universe, The Great Escape. Have any suggestions for future epic pastas? Or questions in general? Leave a question in the comments below. And until the wind hits our sails again, I'll see you in the next Odyssey. Yes. Special shout out to Cold Noise for producing this amazing track for the podcast. This one is called Metamorphosis by Cold Noise. <laughs>